Although diet may not be a direct cause of Crohn's disease, it does play an important role in treating symptoms and also preventing reoccurrence. Now there are some supplements that can help and also some nutrients that you ought to be aware of. In a previous video, I looked at what Crohn's disease is and where the research is at for particular eating patterns. And in this video, I'm looking at nutrients and supplements. The role of specific nutrients in Crohn's disease is a pretty busy area of research. Studies consistently show a strong link between high fiber intake and decreased risk of Crohn's disease. It seems that an intake of more than 22 grams of fiber per day is ideal, particularly from fruits, vegetables, and legumes. The potential mechanism behind this benefit is not well understood. However, many researchers speculate that butyrate is largely responsible. This is a byproduct produced when certain types of fiber are fermented in the gut. Currently, the average US adult consumes only 16 grams of fiber per day, with only 22% from vegetables and 11% from fruit. So immediately, we can see that increased fiber intake from fruits and vegetables would go a long way to improving health. Vitamin D deficiency has emerged as a risk factor for Crohn's disease as well. Animal models suggest that it may help improve intestinal barrier function, and it might also assist in healing the intestinal wall after damage. Human trials have demonstrated that 2,000 international units per day of vitamin D may lead to reduced inflammatory markers, reduced intestinal permeability, and overall improvement in Crohn's disease management. Vitamin D is the nutrient we get from the sun, but can also be supplemented well, so it's a good idea to get your vitamin D checked. Now let's look at some supplements because there is a range of new products that are designed to help treat Crohn's disease. Uh, only a select few of them are backed by any scientific evidence though. There is now good reason to believe an imbalance in gut bacteria contributes to Crohn's disease. Some evidence suggests probiotic use may therefore be helpful. Probiotics are bacteria we eat specifically for health benefits. However, the majority of good studies so far are on animals or in test tubes. If probiotics are indeed useful, the actual beneficial bacterial strains are unknown. There was one promising human study of 10 subjects with Crohn's disease, not in hospital, that previously failed to achieve remission on medications. They were given a combination treatment of probiotics, mainly comprised of bifidobacteria and lactobacilli, and prebiotics, which was in this case psyllium fiber. Now this was given each day for 13 months on average. Results found seven subjects had improved clinical symptoms of diarrhea and abdominal pain. Two of those were able to come off their prednisolone therapy, while four could decrease their dosage. Given that side effects are very rare and there is beneficial potential, we cannot yet say probiotics are useless, but we are just guessing about which types and how much. That brings us to prebiotics, which are a type of fiber that feed your gut bacteria. Research suggests that two forms of prebiotic, inulin and oligofructose, encourage the growth of beneficial bacteria in the gut, namely lactobacilli and bifidobacteria. This is associated with reduced mucosal inflammation in IBD, at least in animal studies. Fermentation of prebiotics in the gut also produces short-chain fatty acids such as butyrate. Now, butyrate has anti-inflammatory effects in the gut with supplements resulting in clinical improvement in 9 of 12 Crohn's disease patients. So early evidence indicates prebiotics may help, but we have a lot to learn still. Lastly, I think it's worth mentioning curcumin supplement, which is the active ingredient in the spice, turmeric. Now, it seems to have powerful anti-inflammatory effects that can affect uh, several aspects of health. Two human studies have shown benefits to IBD when supplementing with around one gram of curcumin per day. However, the vast majority of participants in these studies had ulcerative colitis rather than Crohn's disease. So whether that matters is uncertain. Also note that curcumin supplementation should be taken alongside piperin, which dramatically improves absorption. So look for cur curcumin supplements that contain both. So in summary, eat a variety of fruit and vegetables that you tolerate and enjoy. Uh, this is so that you can get the uh, minimum 22 grams of prebiotic fiber each day. Uh, you should also check for any vitamin D deficiency and correct that. Uh, you can also consider a curcumin supplement and perhaps even a probiotic supplement. However, we don't know what strains or what amount. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up and you can also leave a comment if you like. 
Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to click the big red button below the video so you can subscribe to the Diet vs Disease YouTube channel.